Two day after their upset victory against the Baltimore Ravens, the Miami Dolphins quarterback situation remains murky and a hot topic of conversation. The Dolphins have some extra days before they face the New York Jets at MetLife Stadium in Week 11, but now they're dealing with two injured quarterbacks. Make that two injured quarterbacks still able to play, which is what created a whole lot of chatter Thursday night. Tua Tungavailoa missed a second consecutive start because of the fracture on the middle finger of his throwing hand, but he again served as the backup and entered the game after Jacoby Brissett sustained a knee injury while being sacked on third down. Brissett's injury didn't appear serious because he was given the go-ahead to return to the game the next time the Dolphins had the ball, only to have head coach Brian Flores tell him he was going with Tungavailoa. That, of course, got social media buzzing, wondering why Tua would be okay to go into the game but not okay to start. Flores tries to explain. Flores has tried his best, after the game Thursday and again Friday morning, to explain a complicated situation that essentially boils down to not wanting to put Tungavailoa in harm's way, while also mentioning the ability to make all throws. And, as fate would have it, Tungavailoa did have to deal with some pain when his left hand hit a Baltimore defender following through after a pass attempt. Jacoby was banged up yesterday, same with Tua, Flores said. I thought Tua did a good job of fighting through the discomfort. We all saw him bang his finger, too, in the game, which that's kind of what we were trying to avoid. I think the situation with Tua, obviously I've said many times that he's our quarterback. I said this last night, we try to protect players from themselves. We were, trying to avoid that situation with him banging his finger last night. We've got to take it day to day with both players and see how that goes. Two at time. By all logic, Tunga Vailoa needs to be the starting quarterback for this team if for no other reason than he needs to be developed and evaluated as much as possible the rest of the 2021 season. He's also been more effective than Brissett this season in a comparable body of work, each quarterback having started five games. Tua's return to the lineup was a big story Thursday night, though we'll say here his contributions to the victory were overblown, highlighted by NFL Network, Fox naming him the player of the game against Baltimore. Let's be clear, it was the defense that won the game against Baltimore, not anything or anybody on offense. That said, Tua was efficient after replacing Brissett and made some key throws, evidenced by his 104.0 passer rating though his 64-yard completion to Albert Wilson was more about Baltimore blowing a coverage than any great effort by either quarterback or receiver. Ravens cornerback Marlon Humphrey suggested after the game that Tua gave the offense some juice when he entered, except that the Dolphins gained 21 yards in their first two drives after the quarterback change. The Dolphins did get going in the third drive when Jalen Waddell got himself wide open downfield on a deep crosser and Tua hit him for a 35-yard gain. But that drive ended with a field goal and it was when Xavier Howard scored on a fumble return that the Dolphins got some cushion. The bottom line is that it's possible to acknowledge and respect what Tungavailoa did in relief of Brissett while also not blowing out of proportion. No Dolphins quarterback controversy. Flores also made it a point Friday morning to make sure everybody understands there's no great conspiracy against Tungavailoa, that the decision to have him not start the past two games wasn't part of some plot to keep him down. I think people are trying to turn this into a controversial situation where we don't want a certain player to play, Flores said. I try to look out for the best interest of the players individually, the team. All those things play a role in the decisions we make and that was the case last night. It will be the case again next week, which means that if Tungavailoa can play without putting himself at risk, he'll be in the starting lineup. Breaking down the five plays that most decided the outcome in the Miami Dolphins' 22-10 victory against the Baltimore Ravens. The Miami Dolphins improved to 3-7 on the season with their stunning 22-10 against the Baltimore Ravens at Hard Rock Stadium on Thursday night. We rank the five biggest, most important, plays of the game. 1. Xavier Howard's touchdown. In a game where field goals had accounted for all the scoring to that point, leave it to Xavier Howard to come up with the big-time play on defense. This was yet another example of Howard's big-time playmaking ability as he ripped the ball out of wide receiver Sammy Watkins' hands following a short completion, then showed his running back-like skills to return the fumble 49 yards to the end zone. It's almost ironic that the two signature plays in 2021 from the man who reached double digits in interceptions last season have been recoveries of fumbles that he forced. 2. To a 64-yard completion to Albert Wilson. The Dolphins needed their offense to come through to make their 15-10 lead stand up after Baltimore scored its first touchdown, 
and the answer came very early in the drive after Miles Gaskin was stopped for no gain on first down from the 25. The Dolphins took advantage of a major Baltimore blunder when no defender picked up Wilson running downfield after he went in motion from the right to the left of the offensive formation at the snap. The result was an easy completion, and by the time Wilson finally was brought down, he had reached the Ravens' 11-yard line. 3. Elandon Roberts' third quarter sack. We actually could choose here between Roberts' sack on first and 10 from the Dolphins' 40 or the one on Baltimore's previous possession by Adam Butler on second and 10 from the Miami 39. In both instances, the sacks derailed what looked like promising Ravens' drives and contributed to Lamar Jackson's frustration. 4. Miles Gaskin's seven-yard run late in the fourth quarter. Even after the long completion to Wilson, the Dolphins still needed at least another first down to all but clinch the victory and things didn't look good after a false start penalty on Robert Hunt left Miami with a second and nine from the Baltimore 10-yard line. Gaskin's run didn't clinch anything, but put the Dolphins in position to slam the door, which they did when Gaskin gained two yards on third and two for a first down that all but ended the game and Tua Tungavailoa followed with a touchdown on a quarterback sneak. 5. Jacoby Brissett 52-yard pass to Isaiah Ford. This again was a case of the Dolphins taking advantage of a busted coverage that allowed Ford to run free in the secondary after he got past the cornerback at the line of scrimmage. The long completion in the final minute of the second quarter allowed the Dolphins to kick a field goal and take a 6-3 lead into halftime, which provided much better vibes after a strong first-half performance than against Buffalo in Week 8 when they dominated the first half but were tied 3-3 after the first half. Brian Flores offers incredibly promising update on Miami Dolphins receiver Will Fuller. The Miami Dolphins aren't likely to make the playoffs this season, but things seem to be trending in the right direction for the squad. After upsetting the Baltimore Ravens on Thursday, the Dolphins have won two straight contests for the first time this season. They're also no longer in the basement of the AFC East, as that distinction currently belongs to the New York Jets. On top of that good news, it sounds like Miami might have some help on the way. According to head coach Brian Flores, there's a chance that wide receiver Will Fuller will be available next week. Fuller's stint with the Dolphins has been extremely rocky so far, as the 27-year-old has appeared in just two games this season. He has just four receptions for 26 yards on the year. Still, many folks feel that Fuller is capable of being a nice offensive weapon. He had a great 2020 season with the Houston Texans, as he racked up 53 receptions for 879 yards and 8 touchdowns. He did all of that over just 11 games. If Fuller is available next week, it should provide the Dolphins with a nice boost in their matchup against the Jets. There are some very winnable games coming up on Miami's schedule, and if the squad can capitalize, there might be a chance for the Dolphins to get back near the .500 mark. Fuller is a free agent after the season ends, so his time with Miami could be nearing an end. The former first-round pick is surely hoping to get back on the field and make an impact before the campaign comes to a close.